just the back and forth momentum oh. swap that there's a big rock here comes Romero oh. with a pull counter there Bang! we go we have there it a is. champion ladies and gentlemen Let's go, y'all. Remember 17 here, and today we're going to be talking about the patch notes for UFC 5 update, the March update coming out tomorrow. So, for tomorrow's patch, it's going to have consist of two new fighters, Sean Brady and Jalen Turner, two top 10 fighters. So, it's about over time, overdue for them to be in the game. They have a couple things for gameplay adjustments. So, we're just going to scroll down and take a look at everything there. You guys can see right here, it's also talking about pretty well needed things. Uh, it's expected to drop at 2 p.m. PT. So, for Eastern time, it's going to be 5 p.m. EST for myself. Obviously, the new fighters are there, so let's take a quick look. They're both four stars, I assume, right? 93 takedowns, I see top gain, I see, okay. I'll do more of a breakdown on them when I showcase them. 93 punch speed, 95 punch power, 95 accuracy. He's going he's gonna to be a very solid uh, four star to use, assuming there's no idle issues. You see 299 fight week challenges and new alter egos. These will be added March 5th, 2024 at 4 p.m. PT. So two hours after as opposed to waiting a week after. That's good. So let's get right into what's really important about this patch. We're going to first start off with the striking portion. So with the striking, they're going to increase the stamina cost of block, miss, and evade strikes in the stand-up. So whatever numbers that I have here, these are <laughs> added on to what's been added in the previous patch. So last patch, it was 2.5%. Now it's 7.5%. That is a significant difference from before. And those of you who have been in my streams, you guys have already seen me being able to gas fighters with way more cardio than fighters I'm using just off of knowing how stamina management works. And I'll drop a video on that once this patch drops. And 10% for missed and evaded strikes. Previous patch was 5%. So this is the right amount of, I think it's the right tweak. I'm hoping this is like the magic number that's right in the right spot. Obviously, these are professional athletes. They're not going to gas over every little thing. There's a lot of nuances that come onto that. But we also, we don't want to see people machine gun firing whenever they need to with combinations. And we want to see good reads defensively being rewarded. Nothing is an end-all, be-all. Oh, this is going to guarantee you things, but it's going to increase the likelihood of your victory when you do certain things correctly. So, right here, stamina is a very complex variable. Those of you who played UFC 3, you guys know there was... And multitude of issues <laughs> with stamina on that game and we'll talk on that whenever i stream again <laughs> so okay i like where this is at i'm intrigued to see how it's going to play out especially at a higher uh level but it's gonna be cool fix a tracking issue with spinning strikes mm. i believe it when i see it but spinning strikes were unduly tracking evasions and it was possible to evade them but it required an unintended sweet spot and timing that other strikes don't demand now they should behave like other strikes that's kind of due to that little Beyblade spinning action where it would track your ducks, it could track your pulls, and it would cause, it would warp forward. So, if the warping's been addressed, and usually the cause for warping is when there's like a certain issue with strike ranges. So, that should be addressed here. If it's not, I don't know. Reduce the base damage of spinning elbows. Lead from 30 to 25, and the rear from 35 to 20. That's just a huge, huge change. 15 points of base damage is nuts. I, I, I'm hoping that's not a typo, like, to 20? Not 30, it's not 30, it's 20? If it's 20, that's awesome. That's really good. Not a lot of people have the lead spinning elbow to begin with, but rear spinning elbow, that's awesome. Reduce, reduce the range of the spinning elbow. The range was reduced from a jab range to that of a regular stand-up elbow range. This is significant. This will help you pull counter somebody trying to go for a spinning elbow. So you can just back lunge out the way. This should reduce cases of warping. If this still happens post patch, please send it to me over on my Twitter at aromeroxvii. Because the more that we work together here, the better we can get things done. Reduce the block stun caused by spinning elbows. That's a great change. Means that the defender can act sooner after blocking a strike. Usually, what this means is after you block a strike, you'll be able to fire off a strike because you have frame advantage. A couple examples of that: you know, you block a body kick, you're able to throw a hook. Very similar to when people catch the kick and throw the hook. That's kind of how it works. So spinning elbows will end up at a greater timing disadvantage after they're blocked. That's great. Have the block read through caused by spinning elbows. This is a spinning elbow nerf patch. 10% to 5%. This is a percentage of damage that goes through regardless of the block meter. Quadruple the vulnerability conceded by spinning elbows. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. I sent a couple of examples too. Of fighters have gotten stunned or out of position because they've been... Can't recall them by name. I know it's in our uh, specific chat for Game Changers or Design Council or whatever. But I've sent a couple of examples and I'm happy they've quadrupled the vulnerability conceded by swing elbows. That's awesome. 
reduce the base damage of regular stand-up elbows from 20 to 17.5 25 22.5 okay let you see how that goes increase the vulnerability conceded by regular stand-up elbows from the same as a jab to that of a hook i'm mean, interesting that it was uh the same as a jab in the first place that's uh intriguing that's good more trades are going to be won by fighters especially if they land first the elbow's not going to be able to power through as much remember chin recovery helps that that all plays a factor but for the elbow specifically all right they're gonna have the same vulnerability as the hook Made it harder to cause a special guard breaks of specific kicks, such as hook kicks or rolling thunder. Now, I remember myself and uh, Blake Tyler, we were testing out the rolling thunder. We're noticing that it was pretty bad. I was trying to host Ninja with the hook kick, noticing he wasn't able to block my hook kicks. So, we sent both of those things over, and they changed the threshold from 85 to 60, which means the amount of what you have on the, on the block bar. So, apparently, if you had it down to 85%, your long-term block was down to 85%, you were able to start registering that uh, hook kick through and they were able to, you try to block it and it'll go through. Or if your health was at a certain point as well. Rolling Thunder, just same thing. Once you got a certain amount off the block, it was able to bleed through. So now it's going to take, you're going to have to take a huge chunk out of the long-term block to really get that significant bleed through on the forearms, that damage through on, on the withered, tired arms, which is great. This is great. <laughs> remove an unintended damage penalty from nose injuries i had an uh my nate diaz showcase for prime nate diaz i got a doctor stoppage within the first knockdown nate has a high level one too and i sent that over i also had a fight too where um against a man in newness against a really good player well and i noticed i'm like damn bro like once i got my nose the nose was up there the damage especially with amanda how busted she is it was like there was no coming there was almost no coming back from that point so it affected straight and upper arc strikes. Okay, uppercuts too. Increasing the damage by over 30%. That's nuts. This fix should reduce the compounding effect of causing a nose injury and make corresponding doctor stop, which is significantly harder to achieve. That's probably plays a huge part as to why Nate also felt <laughs> like goddamn God. Nose injuries continue to inflict a 15% penalty to short-term stamina recovery speed. So on top of the stamina changes, and this still being a thing, 15% penalty to short-term stamina recovery speed. That's going to be huge. Um, improved blood particle. Oh, this is this was already in, in the last patch. It just wasn't uh, informed. All Next right. Next up, we're going to be focusing on the grappling. Canceling a double leg into the over on the clinch will now require a 1% stamina advantage. This was in four. I don't know why it was gone in five. It's three, four months. It took a while for this change to get added in. But to much of our suffering, it's finally added in. Now, remember this. How this kind of works out the one percent stamina advantage people might not think it's much but remember before it will be much easier for somebody to throw a combination get into the bail clinch and didn't matter if they had a stamina advantage or not which made it very difficult to try to predict certain things if you knew the counters you were fine but the sprawl overrides the bail like if you know that the double leg is coming the sprawl is going to override that and if you're going against somebody who's desperately fishing for it as opposed to timing it with a short-term stamina advantage, which I was doing on uh, my stream yesterday with the four-star fighters. I was timing it based on short-term stamina advantage just to prepare myself for the patch. This is going to be huge. A lot of players are going to be hurt by this. And stri <laughs> strikers are going to have a lot more fun. Reduce the stamina advantage requirement for canceling the single leg and low single leg into the back clinch from 30% to 20%. This is requested by myself because... Real life, I mean, I can post accounts of examples of myself and other real life fighters. How we saw with Sahuda and Marab, you don't need that big of a stamina advantage to get to that position. However, in UFC 4, back sitting was extremely busted. The, <laughs> the, the rear naked choke, especially, was super, super strong in that game. So they nerfed it to the ground, and you rarely saw it. Now, like, I, like, I was able to hit it even with the 30% because I just have. I guess decent timing and whatnot but 20 percent it will help out a lot of uh grapplers too because with the double leg bail nerve that's going to affect a couple of their entries you already know that the takedowns aren't exactly at their strongest but at the very least this is going to help provide a window when guys are trying to blitz a grappler with like six piece combinations or less their stamina is low and you have a little single it's going to help you punish them for that so it's a good good little balance trade off there it's going to take some good timing but yeah and in order to do that it doesn't tell you how to do that if you're gonna do that, you gotta hold back on the right analog stick. So if you're on the left side of the screen, you're holding back on the right analog stick. If you're on the right side of the screen, you know, 
to your fighter's back, you know, back on the right analog stick. Ground and pound submissions will now require a health event. That's great. This changes goals to prevent the submission true combos. That's an interesting term. That were possible by stringing deep submissions. So essentially, you guys have seen it. I sent a couple clips in. Um, especially, uh, I think one happened to GOAT. That was like really unfortunate. One happened to myself too. It's a very, very uh, iffy situation, right? Because the uh, sub fighter stamina is not recovering while they're in that submission. So if you had already initiated a deep submission and you got into a postured position, you were able to chain the next submission basically for free. And it was next to not impossible for the guy as the bottom fighter to really escape out of there. It's a very, It was a very, very super, super strong thing. So now you really need the rock. You have to rock the guy in order to get into the other submission attempt. So that's going to incentivize more people not just posturing up and looking for a stamina advantage. Now you have to rock the guy, which is going to put them at risk for the person recovering guard and yada yada. Reduce the stamina advantage of requirement for some ground and pound transitions. Going to incentivize a lot more movement. Those of you who do jujitsu, wrestlers who've gotten into jujitsu or training in MMA in general, once you once you're unpostured in the guard, they're not holding onto your head. It's not going to take much for you to stack or just have the feet on hip situation. We see it in MMA all the time. So to drop the requirement from 50% to 10%. That's going to be huge because now we can actually punish people in the full guard. Think of Brian Ortega and Alexander Volkanovski round three. After sur surviving that onslaught submissions, Volkanovski gets in the posture, posture position, gets in the stack guard, so it's beating the piss out of Brian Ortega. And now you don't have to really rely on going straight from the get up into the stack. You can go from posture, have your stamina advantage, and then go to it much safer, which is going to lead to a good amount of damage for you. From there too, you can go stack guard to half guard. It's been reduced from 10% to 5%, I believe. Stack guard from 25% uh, to 10%. So that's really, really good. It's going to incentivize a lot more ground and pound situations, a lot more passing, a lot more activity on the ground. This one, um, I had a video going against a number one exploiter on UFC 5 who had hit number one basically using the star struggle animation. It's been fixed, so no longer going to be a problem. So that's great. Added a heel hook entry to the top stack guard, <laughs> stack guard ground and pound position. Requires heel hook level one. Okay. And according to how the ground and pound submissions work, shall work after this patch, it shall also require a health event, which is good. So for PlayStation, it'll be L2, R1, and down on the right stick, and Xbox, LT, RB, and down on the right stick. Allow for muscle modifier to be used in transitions from bottom mount to back mount. The mount feels like too strong after recent ground and pound tuning. So remember, you could posture up in the mount position and, and go for submission currently. That won't be possible. Now with the rocks too, now if you rock somebody in mount, you can go for that. And that's super, super dangerous. But they muscle transition to back mount. And just as they, I was just thinking about it, as spending a lot of stamina to turn your back will mean playing with fire against the threat of rear naked choke or arm bar. So I'm going to give you all a quick little tip. Um, not every fighter has a back, a back mount arm bar, right? They don't have the back mount arm bar. You need, I believe, level three arm bars to have that. I'm going to double check on stream uh, tomorrow. But I'm pretty sure it's level three arm bars. So if you know that your opponent only has a rear naked choke or going back flat, then realistically speaking, you, you don't really have much to worry about. But you have to be ready to deny the moment you give up and back mount. Because if you go down there with a short term stamina advantage and they enter in TBS, then well, it's playing with fire. It's a dominant position. You don't want to give that up. At least back mount will give you a chance to if your fighter has certain wrestling or jiu-jitsu get-ups if they try to strike from there you'll be able to hit one of those get-ups and shake them off so that's cool slightly reduced facial redness during submission a couple miscellaneous up additions and updates but it's more uh several rare crashes visual glitches i want to see some stuff with regards to camera angles maybe they did fix some stuff here if there's any more camera angle issues send it over to my twitter at a romero xvi because the more i can report things and send them over the more we can make our Make our gaming experience significantly easier. Overall, this is a significantly better patch than the la last one. I didn't even really view it much as a patch. More of a tuner, honestly, because there wasn't much done, even though with the stamina. But this is much better. Definitely took a listen to a lot of the community complaints. Very happy to see a lot of spinning elbow stuff, because this was horrible in UFC 4. Horrible to deal with on UFC 4. So pretty happy with that. That's going to be it for breaking down the patch notes. We'll be streaming the patch live tomorrow after 5 p.m., maybe six o'clock or seven o'clock because i do want to use the new fighters or in the new alter egos i want to see who they are so mercy 17 i appreciate y'all much love take care and we'll be streaming the patch in due time i'm out of here